Hey everyone, today we're looking at the paper How to Regressive Entity Retrieval by authors from University of Amsterdam, Facebook AI Research, ENS PSL University uh, in RIA and University College London. This paper is about entity retrieval, a general problem in language processing where the goal is to detect and to classify entity mentions within documents. And the authors take quite an interesting and novel approach. They're using standard neural machine translation type of architectures to target this task, which is typically more like an information retrieval classification style of problem. So they are using yeah, these text generation models to tackle this quite successfully, which results in a model that is much more memory efficient because it's working with tokens and it's able to model the uh, contextual information of an article um, as well as the relationships between tokens within a entity that is being predicted. So how does this work? The authors focus on three very related problems in this paper. The first problem is the task of entity detection. Given that you have some sentence such as Superman saved Metropolis, where Metropolis is the entity mentioned you want to detect with start and end tokens classifying uh, specifying the start and end of the mention. The goal is to disambiguate this entity mention to the correct entity, which here is the, um, we're dealing here with the Wikipedia data set. This is uh, basically the goal is to point to the correct article title, either Metropolis the comics, Metropolis the film, or the algorithm. And the way that the authors do this in this paper is they are not just trying to find the closest article or something like that, or they're doing some, something like TF-IDF or related approaches. They are actually generating the entity name directly. So generating, for example, Metropolis and then bracket, comics and bracket. And this is what they're doing, which is quite an interesting and novel approach. I'm not so up to date with this task, but this sounds quite an interesting way to do this to me. And similarly, they're going to be generating all of those and then they're going to have some sort of a likelihood and then they can pick the top choice. This problem or this approach can also be applied to the more general case where you don't know where the start and the end tokens are, which is entity linking. And in this case, the algorithm also has to predict the starting point of the mention and the end point. So this is another uh, problem that the authors apply the algorithm to. And the final one is document retrieval, where you are provided some question or some text, and then you have to again retrieve the closest Wikipedia article to that question. And again, in this case, they are taking a similar approach where um, here you have which US nucle nuclear reactor had a major accident in 1979. Instead of doing something like nearest neighbor search or TF-IDF or so to find the closest documents to this query, they are generating the title of the closest document, which is three mile island accident here. So at this point, you may be wondering, how does this work? Um, how is it possible to do this? And actually the key part is, so, so as you can imagine, the training data is already available from Wikipedia. You have, let's say, text spans and then links to the closest Wikipedia article or ordering of the Wikipedia articles. And for the entities, we have a lot of links already in Wikipedia. So here already, there would be a link to Metropolis Comics. And you can use this training signal to train this model. The difficult part or the most difficult part to me seems to be how do you make sure that this generative translation model uh, here, uh, which they use Bar the BART model in this paper, how does this model is generating always a correct entity or a correct link to the to an article that is an actual article. And the key part here is that they're using a constrained beam search method, which make sure that the model cannot generate any title that is not a Wikipedia title. And it seems to be quite effective. They are using a data structure to store all possible titles uh, with all possible, so given a prefix like three, which has been generated already by Beam Search. Basically, they know all possibilities for entity uh, disambiguated, entity disambiguated, which can complete this uh, three. So it could be a mile, it could be three yards, something like that. And they're able to basically chop off all um, 
elements on the beam that are not gonna lead to a valid title, valid entity, part of Wikipedia. So this is an um, interesting approach. And also the approach is effective on a wide range of those benchmarks, entity disambiguation, entity linking here, um, and document retrieval, all of those, the performance is very nice. And especially on the document retrieval, I'm actually quite surprised that this works pretty well. Um, given that the fact that the model is not using the actual document, the text of that, to predict the closest documents. So quite nice, and this leads to, leads to also a quite a big parameter saving, because think about it, here you're not going to be storing information for each entity, for each article on Wikipedia. You're not going to be building a database of articles, but you're only going to be training this model, which is learned to um, use the context provided, the query, and it's able to generate a sequence of tokens that lead to a correct title in Wikipedia, a correct disambiguation. So actually this leads to quite a nice parameter saving. Um, the only added thing that you need to do is you need to have this index sort of, or this data structure, which is going to be used to constrain your generation process to only be able to generate correct titles. But this is not so large. I think they say that it's like 600 megabytes or so somewhere in the paper. Quite an interesting approach and um, very effective. To give you some more insight, here we have an example in the appendix of how the training data looks like here for the entity dis disambiguation task. So you provide some sentence about here, some text about Metropolis, and you have a start end token and end end token. And then you have your goal output provided by the Wikipedia dataset, which is Metropolis Comics. And then you basically predict, those are the predictions from the beam search with the beam five or something like that here. So that is all that I wanted to cover for today. Check out this interesting paper and I'll talk to you in the next video.